Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to start building the Academy 135th scale Merkava 2D. Uh, this is a fairly new kit from Academy. I also like to thank Academy for sending this out for our build videos. It looks like a nice kit, so we'll get started on that. But before I do, I want to talk to you about a couple of other exciting things. First of all, this is the first video that is going to be recorded on my new new camera, which is on my iPhone 7 Plus. Really excited about that. This camera is supposed to be a lot better than the 6 that I was using. Plus we have a zoom in feature now. And we'll also be able to record in 4K going forward pretty soon. One of the best things that's going to be exciting for me is that I got a much larger memory on it. Because filming the videos I can only film a little bit at a time because of all the other junk that I had on my phone. So this one has a huge memory and I can record a lot more video on it. I'll just make it a lot easier to, uh, to film the videos. Plus, I also want to thank everybody, as of this video right now, I'm just breaking 20,000 subscribers, which is really exciting to me. I never thought we'd get that, um, that high. I want to thank all my subscribers and all my viewers in general. Without you guys, uh, this channel wouldn't be nearly what it is today. So I want to thank you all for that. And without talking anymore, let's get started on the build. As we get started on it, you can see that the kit offers you a bathtub style hull, which means that all the sides are actually already permanently put into place and when it's molded. Uh, lots of little parts, but nothing crazy that all fit really well. Everything's all laid out very nicely too, so instructions are super easy to follow. So this is the type of kit that just about any type of modeler from experience wise could start off building. start to show you the uh, construction of the uh, road wheels. Uh, one nice thing that Academy does on quite a few of their kits is they give you poly caps for each one of the road wheels rather than just for the uh, drive sprocket and return idler. And the benefit of this is that you can paint and weather the wheels individually and then pop them on later and not have to worry about working around the tracks and things like that. So or excuse me, the suspension, and then the tracks will pop on easily later on. So as I show you right here, very, very simple. You just pop a kind of a skin colored uh, 
poly cap into each one of these and the backs of all the wheels are exactly the same so it won't matter on that put a little glue up in there and sandwich that together for a little while and that's how all the wheels are going to go together so I'm going to go ahead and finish up gluing all these also you notice there's a little parting line in here that I'm going to have to take care of as well I not knock the burr off but now that I notice that that line's there I want to get rid of that as well so I'm going to take care of all the, the wheels right now And this will be the one reason why I was telling you about the poly caps are such a nice feature that I wish all companies would put on. See, we'll be able to slide all of these wheels right into place, and we can keep them there during the whole build so we, you know, see how flat the vehicle is laying and things like that to make sure everything is going together properly. But then when it does come time to paint, especially if we're going to do a cleaner vehicle and you want to show off all this rubber. Uh, it'll be easy to just pop these right off. The other nice thing about that is when they have poly caps on them, the wheels will spin. And instead of having to glue them into place, and these are real tight, so they aren't going to come off or anything on it. So poly caps is a great thing, and I wish all the uh, manufacturers would put those on. This is a quick building tip. Uh, as you go to start to install these back hatches right here, I haven't glued them into place yet. Uh, one thing I'd recommend is maybe leaving these two front hooks off to the very end of the build. Uh, I keep pushing it straight down to work on the back, and as I do, I end up knocking them off. And I've actually knocked them off twice now. I keep forgetting that they're there. So just something for you to think about as you go forward. Maybe put those on last. That way that's one less thing to keep popping off as you build. Okay, many of you may have noticed that there were holes and stuff in the bottom of the hall and wondering about how to fill those up. What happens on the Merkava, the two, they went and put some heavy duty belly armor on the hull. So Academy has provided you with that, which I'm actually gonna go ahead and use super glue to attach because it's such a long area to try to glue down all at once. It'd just be easier just to pop the super glue on and then glue that into place. Now the way the body arm or excuse me the belly armor is held into place in real life is with these bolts so those will just glue on into place with a little plastic cement and get that all lined up. As you begin to build this is probably going to be one of the most difficult pieces of the build and it's these little little bins that go on the back and just want to just tell you not to be afraid of them and just take them little by little and really not that difficult to build uh, it's just there's a lot of little precise little parts that require some tweezers and just a little bit of a uh, little bit of time getting it all into place and lining it up it like I said it's not gonna be that difficult it's just getting everything square and the Tamiya Extra Thin works really really well on those parts it softens the plastic real quick uh, you know I built fast and I don't always let the glue fully dry on most parts because you don't need to for for what I'm doing but this part I do like to let it dry a little bit more just so when we go to put these these braces on that we won't have this move at all so we'll let this set up for about five minutes then come back put these on the outer pieces and show you but like I said, it's. I know you guys can do it. Don't be daunted by the little tiny parts. It's all, all capable of doing. The kit includes two different types of side skirts. And regardless of which one you choose, you do want to go ahead and put those on before you attach the, the body to the hull. Uh, of the uh, the tank. Now when you do this we're going to dry fit the top of the uh, hull onto the lower hull but this is just temporarily you don't want to glue it into place yet and that's because once you do that you'll have a real real tough time getting the tracks on.
it. So as you can see right here, I'm just, just fitting it into place, giving it a try, but we'll be able to pull it off and start working on some of the other pieces of the hull. A couple of uh, minutes here, you're just going to watch uh, fast forward of me putting all the different parts on the turret. Uh, not much more to talk about, it just goes together really, really easily and the instructions are real clear. So as long as you can follow the instructions, it'll go together with no problems. Okay, as I start to uh, apply the last little parts to the turret, I just wanted to kind of give you my impressions of the kit. The kit is really, really nice and easy to put together. There was uh, no fit problems. There is not in a super ton of extra little tiny parts that you're putting on that can sometimes get frustrating. There are a few little ones here and there, but it's, it's usually designed because uh, it's going to make the most amount of detail for it. All the gun barrels that you'll see as we start to put them on are all slide bolted, so they're uh, they look really good when we're going to put those on. And like I said, it just overall it was just an enjoyable build. Nothing crazy on the number of parts. And the thing I do appreciate the most is that parts fit together the way they're supposed to. Too many times, some of these companies make stuff so hard to put together. But Academy did a really nice job on this kit glue these last little smoke dischargers on. You can just see everything just fits together really well. Uh, the, the barrel is a multi-piece barrel and it, I've done a lot of sanding on it right now and we're gonna put a coat of, uh, of our black paint on there to see what more we need to do on it but uh, it's looking pretty good. Put this last little piece on right here. But yeah, overall, it's a, it's a very good build and uh, really simple to put together, just following the instructions. It's probably about about two or three good days of you know working six, seven hours a day on it to get it done. But 
I will go ahead and put the machine guns on and finish up the last little couple of parts on here and then we'll get to painting. Here we are. Uh, the principal construction is now done. I've gone ahead and glued the, uh, the machine guns, pieces like that on there, the fire extinguishers, all the little extra side parts. We also went ahead and put the uh, ball and chain armor across the back as well. Uh, like I said, construction is done except for the final bit of putting the, uh, the top hole and the lower hole together. And that's mainly because we want the tracks to go on properly. So as, as normal, many of you know, I'm going to paint the entire thing with XF69, the natal black. This will show if I have any flaws in the barrel or any other areas that I might need to clean up first. So um, we're going to spray the entire thing with XF69 right now and then get on to the body color. One other thing too I'll point out to you that I get a lot of questions uh, from time to time is the NATO black is not, not a primer at all. This is strictly to give us a shadow coat underneath our primary paint job and also to uh, look for errors like I was saying with the barrel. That's why I spray everything with black. Is black is real easy to see a flaw that if you've made a mistake anywhere on it. So yeah, this is not a primer at all. I don't normally prime any of my models. Haven't really found the necessity to. So yeah, this is strictly just an error and a uh, shadow coat. Okay, I've gone ahead and sprayed the, the basic NATO black over the tracks, and now we're going to use our track brown, which is a mixture of black brown and a touch of red. And we're going to just go over lightly over the, it just gives it a basic little tarnish color underneath, so when we do our weathering, it's just not stark black underneath. Oh, and one other question too, I get every once in a while, I do paint the bottom of my vehicles. And the main reason I paint the bottom of the vehicles is because before I do any painting on the top, I always do a little test on the bottom to see how something's going to look. The tracks have now dried and I've also gone over with the tracks with a quick spray of testers clear coat, uh, dull coat over it. And that's just to seal our paint job in because any type of weathering you do on it will have a tendency to sometimes pull up the paint if it's not completely sealed in. So just using our desert wa dust as a fixer on the wash. And then I'm just gonna mainly use the light sienna first to see how it looks without mixing any other pigments in it because we want it to be more of the desert look since it is a, an Israeli vehicle. So just starting off, just to taking an old brush and I'm just gonna show you on the middle because where I'm gonna do the entire track later, but just to kind of give you an idea, just put a nice wet coat of the desert dust into all the little areas and put it on wet. That way it really flows into everything so you're not missing any areas. And you can use the same brush just kind of sprinkle it up on top first to get it kind of thick and kind of just blot it in. Now obviously it's going to dry completely different than the way it looks right here. So now that I've kind of shown you what we're trying to do with it, let's let it dry. What I'm doing now is I'm taking some Vallejo dark brown wash and I thinned it way, way, way down, probably about 80% water and a couple drops of thinner, in, or excuse me, a couple drops of the wash in there, mixing that all up. And what we're gonna do is just taking the tiniest little amount and we're gonna start applying it to the center of the tracks. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna break up the, just the monotony of just being one solid color like that. It's going to dry a lot lighter than what it is over here, but it's also gonna, add some highlight to a lot of the, the centers of the track. Now as that dries, I'm just going to do a little bit of it right here, uh, I'll show you over here. This area right here has already been done and it's actually the second step that I was going to show you as well. I'm taking my dark steel 
uh, pigment and just using a, a Q-tip just dipped it into it and we're just going to go over all of these areas just on the very top of the cleat and what that's going to do is just you know all that dirt and grime would get rubbed off because that's where it's making contact with the ground so that area will be a little bit more worn down and you can see hopefully as we turn it in the light you can see just a tiny glint of bare metal but it, it's not overly done it's not super bright like our polishing powder would be on something that's really smooth so we're gonna go down the line here and finish up the track you can see these need to have a little bit of the the, the color put into the middle but that's generally what the idea is gonna look like once we get the track built Move it a little bit closer to it you can kind of see it's got like all the dirt and grime built up in there but still has the metal on the outside so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the tracks we've let that dry now we're going to spray our our base coat of the paint now making the Israeli gray green color that we want to get is actually very easily it's 50 percent XF 49 and 50 percent XF 66 I mix them together uh, what I like to do is I'll mix up a bottle big bottle in advance and just kind of wrote IDF on it so I remember which color it is and keep it thinned down and ready to go and you'll always be able to paint uh, Israeli color so we're gonna go ahead and put a coat on the turret top and lower hull right now I sprayed the entire model with uh, Tester's Dull Coat again and what I wanted to show you is because of the way this came out when you put the black undercoat on and then spray a light coat of your base coat and then using that dull coat you put kind of a kind of a decently heavy coat on it you can see how the paint kind of just slightly separates a little bit in the corner and it gives the effect of, of depth to it and that's why I do put the shadow coat on so sometimes you, if you put too heavy of a coat on the top you're going to just wash all that away but I thought that was a pretty good example of showing making all the panels and the little rivets and stuff pop right out without having to even put a wash on it so uh, the turret came out similar because we didn't go super heavy on the paint job now we have I have to touch up the uh, machine guns and stuff but but you can see a lot of the shadow that we were talking about and there's no pin wash or anything on this yet so it's, it's looking pretty good just the way it is now the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to highlight the panels even a little bit more because this has been put on it's going to darken these panels ever so much so we're going to take our same color the uh, that we painted the entire body with and we're just going to lightly mist inside each one of the panels and because this has been darkened because of the dull coat it's going to make the panels even pop out even more. So I'm going to set the airbrush up again and I'll just show you a few of them going on there. It's a little bit hard sometimes because you got to get really close and lightly and I don't want, don't want to see the back of my hand for the entire video. But I'll try to get in there just to show you a few of them in there. the uh, the piece back a little bit from the light but it's very very visible in person hopefully the camera's picking it up as well but you can see the light tones in the middle start to make the side corners start to pop out a little more because they're a little bit darker and they have a little bit of a shadow on it so uh, I'm gonna go over and do the entire vehicle with that 
uh, now that I've shown you what I was talking about and I think it's starting to come out pretty good look using that technique so we're gonna keep going forward with it and one more quick shot I've gone over the uh, the top of the vehicle here and using that paint just highlighted middle of the panels things like that and left some of the higher crease points uh, exposed so you can even see even more how the uh, makes it pop out a little bit let me show you what I've done so far uh, we've gone ahead and assembled put the tracks on and assembled the top and bottom of the hull together glued that down the turret obviously just slides right into place I also went and cut out a long piece of mask and masked the front of the barrel to have the white stripe down the front show you some of that stuff we also did some of the soot marks coming off the engine and the black tip on the barrel now I've lightly done some a little bit of wash in certain areas like on the uh, filters here all these or exhaust vents as well as like inside of some of like of the smoke dischargers things like that and we did a little bit up on around the, the front and side uh, now I'm gonna probably go ahead and do some of uh, dirtying effect of getting it really kind of a dusty dirty look that the most of the pictures that you see online look like so to do that we're gonna use our Vallejo pigments and washes again and we'll start working on that here I'm mixing up a little bit of a slurry of the exact two uh, pigments and washes that we did on the track so it's the light sienna pigment and the desert dust wash and we're just mixing them together right here on an old paintbrush and we're not going to go crazy but we do want to put some amount of dirt across the bottom so then you can have some areas I spent the last like half an hour looking at photos of the real thing trying to get a decent idea of how we're going to do this some of them are not very dirty at all and some of them are completely filthy but dusty wise so not a lot of this thick dirt so I'm just going to go lightly across the bottom like I said we can go slightly up And then you can have some areas that have a little bit of accumulation of dirt, which we're just going to lightly let build up that way. I'm kind of doing a condensed version right here because like I said the camera is always tough to get in the way we're also going to do a little bit of this flicking mud just going over lightly with that Now I know the way it looks right now wet, it's not the greatest looking stuff in the world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish doing the vehicle. I'm going to show you dry and then I'm going to show you the next step that we're going to do with this stuff to kind of knock it down so it's not so harsh. Now as the, uh, the pigment begins to dry in it, you want to take a nice stiff brush and just start going over it and start blending it together and this will knock off some of the thicker areas that just don't look correct and you can just start it's gonna take a little bit of time but we're gonna start blending all of this together and you can see we'll just leave more of the the dirt on the bottom as if the water is or rain is not washed it down there and into the cracks taking off any excess that are on there and any of the splash marks so this like I said is a lot of time-consuming uh, job so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off camera and I'll start to show you what it looks like well here we are here's our uh, final reveal I spent about the last 45 minutes to an hour uh, smoothing down all of the surfaces on it with the uh, 
actually start ended up using a cotton swab. It turned out that works the best. It's just the amount of abrasiveness to knock down some of the areas, kind of blend it together. Something like you can see how a lot of it started to accumulate in some of the nooks and crannies in there, which uh, I'll give you a little 360 on it and then show you a little bit more of a top view as well. And as we get more and more light, you can see how the uh, mud and dirt effect kind of built up inside there. And I'll raise this up a little bit. Whoop. Let me see more of a top view. There we go. Spin that around a little bit more. So that is it. So as a kit, the kit goes together really well. No fit problems. Uh, simple, easy to follow instructions. Good for any type of, from a beginner on up. Uh, best part of all is, is not too many parts. So you can uh, spend a few, few days building on the model and then you can get right to painting and weathering and, and beating it up and making it look like the real thing, which is my favorite part. So I want to thank you for tuning in and watching today. Uh, I appreciate all of you that do so. And please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.